We've got quite a long wait until Pokemon Scarlet and Violet come out, so I thought it'd be fun to break down the best fan-made Pokemon games for 2022. Let's take a look. Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka A Drive. I'm bringing you guys a brand new video today. And today I'm gonna break down the top five best Pokemon fan made games for you to enjoy this summer for 2022 as we kind of wait for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to come out. I'm breaking down a list based on the games that I've played and the games that I've enjoyed the most. And some of the games on this list I actually want to replay because they're that darn good. So I encourage you to take some time and enjoy this video and make some notes and dive into these games because they really are incredible. I'll have information in the description below including links to my playlist for each of these series if you want to follow along or play along with my series or if you just want to try it yourself you can find all the information in the description below be sure to like the vi this video if you guys enjoy it and of course subscribe to the channel if you guys are new as we're closing in on 1 million subscribers and if everyone who watches this actually subscribes not only get to see my awesome pokemon content but you know you'll get us close to a million and you won't miss out on our next video but without further ado let's dive into the countdown with number five of the best pokemon fan made games to play in 2022. i should mention before i actually start the list that i'm going to be doing fan made games not rom hacks so it's not going to be pokemon games that have been kind of adjusted from a shell but rather all of these seem to be kind of starting from scratch so kicking off our list we actually have pokemon bushido at number five pokemon bushido is a game that i think is actually insane it's so much different than the other games in this list it features shadow Pokemon that are going to be utilized by the evil team, the Akui clan, and you're actually the child of a royal samurai, and the game has some major ancient vibes. It's got mid-battle dialogue like the anime episodes, and they actually do really cool things where the other trainers kind of put you at a disadvantage with unique mechanics using their katanas. The katanas are actually these special swords that you have that replace the HMs in the game and allow you to access different powers. And there's some really beautiful landscape and areas to explore in this one. I think this game utilizes the map really well as well. And it's up to generation eight of Pokemon. So there's a nice diversity of Pokemon. Nothing really new in that sense, but you have a really cool selection of starter Pokemon. And the shadow forms keep things interesting as you kind of play through. I also really like the tie-in with the legendary Pokemon. They focus on Virizion, Terrakion, and Kabalion being kind of the clans and kind of the katana leaders, I guess. Uh, and there's a really cool enemy team, as I mentioned, that has a pretty tough set of challenging battles. So I think this game has a really nice balance of challenge, beautiful kind of settings, great UI, and a very unique storyline that is much different than kind of the other games in this list. So I got to give some love to Pokemon Bushido. Number four on my list is actually going to be Pokemon Unbound. And I have to say that admittedly, I haven't finished Pokemon Unbound, but I think I've played enough of it at this point to make a fair evaluation or at least put it on this countdown. I don't think it'd be fair to leave it off. So I got to say so far, the storyline has been enticing. It's extensive. There's a lot of story. It's very story driven, but so far it's been very cohesive. There's a lot of fun puzzles if you want the challenge, but this game is very customizable. You can choose different levels in terms of puzzles. You could choose four different difficulty modes, one of which is like impossible. The one I'm playing on is almost impossible, it seems, with the Nuzlocke. So there's some pretty good challenges. And there's even a sandbox mode, which allows you to kind of customize your Pokemon with egg moves and things like that as you play through the game to kind of take out some of the grinding, which I'm a big, a big fan of. There's no new forms in this one, but there are Mega Evolutions, which I love. And it even has Dynamaxing, Raid Den, Z-Moves, and much, much more. This game also features a custom soundtrack. So if you love the music of Pokemon games, they actually nail it with this. They also have a unique mission system that allows you to get various Pokemon and cool items that'll help you throughout your journey. And uh, they can be pretty extensive, some of these different missions, but it's a very good UI and a very good system to kind of showcase how to utilize these missions and ultimately play through the game, uh, whichever way you ultimately want to. Um, and like I said, the, the levels of difficulty give you a lot of different things that you can you can kind of do. So I've also heard that there's an extensive post game with Unbound, but at this point I haven't really played it. But it does seem as though this is the kind of game that you can very easily sink hundreds of hours into without batting an eye. Pokemon Unbound is very, very deep, and there's a lot to do in this fan-made game. Number three on this list is insane, guys. I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite fan-made games of all time. And the only reason why it's number three on the list is because the other two are so good. Pokemon Infinity. I played this game when it was a demo. I played it when it finally was finished. And I think this game is incredible. It has everything that I want in a Pokemon fan-made game. There's tons of epic fake Pokemon like Gorochu, Raichu's evolution, Nido Rook, an alternative evolution to the Nidoran line, Wariena, which is a Mudiena evolution, and even different Pokemon types like new forms 
like Grim Fowl evolving from a different type of Hoot Hoot and Noctowl. It makes old Pokemon feel special again, and you just never know what kind of Pokemon you're going to get throughout the story that's going to have something unique to it. So it makes it really fun and adds a lot of replay value. Just some of my favorite Fakemon ever, to be honest. I think the story really sets Infinity apart. There's a really good story that has twists and turns that keep you guessing all the way down to kind of the final dialogue of it all shaken down at the end. And uh, it's, it's, it's honestly just, it's worth the story alone. There's an extensive post game that'll give you plenty to do. There's awesome, really, one of the coolest things with the post game is they actually kind of bring in old trainers from previous Pokemon games. So you'll see like, I don't know, Gardenia chilling in the game and you'll battle her. And there's just very much a ton of effort went into this game. The routes were beautiful. I think one of the things I loved about this game is how they utilize their routes. You uh, often have to come back to routes later on to be able to access different parts of it with different HMs and things like that. And I feel like it was just really good map design overall. Um, I think Infinity is phenomenal. It's a game I will most certainly replay at some point. And I just love the, the combination of kind of new fake mon, a really good story, uh, taking old Pokemon and kind of reinventing them in a unique way. You, you don't want to miss Pokemon Infinity. It's got to be on your list. It's been a while since I played this one. In fact, number two on our list, I started four years ago, and that is Pokemon Insurgents. But you can't make a list like this without Pokemon Insurgents on it. And I'm going to be replaying Insurgents this summer, I'm pretty sure, man. I have been itching to play this game again. The Tauron region is incredible. It is, this is, this is like... The gold standard of fan-made games was Insurgents, I'm not gonna lie. It's got one of the coolest intro scenes and storylines. I love how they tie in mythical Pokemon, uh, something that the franchise currently doesn't do. The mythicals are just given away in Mystery Gift, but Insurgents really captures them and utilizes them in such a unique way that drives the story, which I love. But to me, the biggest highlight for Insurgents is the Delta species. This actually existed before Alolan forms existed, and it's kind of the same idea where you take existing Pokemon and you reimagine them. And the Delta species, you get hit with them right off the bat because there are custom Delta starters, including a Charmander that is Ghost and Dragon. Very, very cool stuff, although the Venusaur line is nuts at Fairy and Psychic. That thing is crazy good. Um, but there's some really cool ones. Delta Vespaquen, which is a fire and steel type. Delta Mach is a pile of sand and a ground type. And showing some love to Delta Metagross, which has two Delta forms. It's so epic. With a spider form and a rune form, which have totally different typings. Alongside that, the game has new Mega Evolutions. And you know I'm a big Mega guy. I've said it before, I love Mega Evolutions. This game really hits the nail on the head with that. Because not only are there new Mega Evolutions for existing Pokemon, like Mega Flygon, but the Delta Pokemon that you can find, some of them also have Mega Evolutions, which makes this game really, really cool. There's custom abilities, custom weather, and much, much more. The game features challenge modes like Nuzlocke, Randomizer, and much, much more. And there's even apparently online features, which is crazy. I never took advantage of that. There's new held items, armor. I, I just, there's, I don't know how you can even, I, I, you should be convinced at this point because Pokemon Insurgents is so great. I will be playing Insurgents again this summer. I have to, I, I just got to play it again. It's so good. And last but not least, I talked about Insurgents being kind of the pinnacle of fan-made games. But in my opinion, with no disrespect to them, that uh, that title no longer goes to Insurgents. It goes to Pokemon Xenoverse. Pokemon Xenoverse, one of our most historic series of all time. It is the holy grail of fan-made Pokemon games, in my opinion. At this time, if you have not played Xenoverse, you are seriously missing out. I genuinely believe that Xenoverse, as a fan-made Pokemon game, is better than some of the actual Pokemon games we have gotten. I think it is that good. There is an incredible story with memorable characters, not only trainers, but memorable fake Pokemon. There's new evolutions, including a dragon evolution, which I'm sure many of you guys want to see. There's a forms of existing Pokemon that are amazing, including Gengar, which is one of the ones that really stands out in the story to me, but there are so many other ones. And again, I can't speak enough to some of the fake mon of the game. Pokemon like Scoville are just phenomenal. I really like some of the designs and the artists that made this game were just insane. I mean, they did a really good job. The starter Pokemon, I mean, when you start your journey, you have some really cool starters that take some twists and turns and have a, just an incredible storyline as well. There's a new UI that's way different than other Pokemon games, which is super fluid. There's new mega evolutions for existing Pokemon like Blossom, and they're even adding DLC. There's like multiple DLCs coming out and multiple more planned. I still actually have to record a few of those DLC updates, but I genuinely think that Pokemon Xenoverse is better than some of the actual Pokemon games. 
it really is that good and i just can't speak enough to how great this this game is every game on this list is phenomenal but to me if you have not played pokemon xenoverse yet you are really you're just missing out dude i'm not gonna lie you're simply missing out i gotta mention too before i forget like even some of the key battles have like cutscenes. no other game like has that like they're they're like custom drawn artwork for these cutscenes. This game just has it all. It really does. As I said, I know we're kind of in the off season for Pokemon as we wait for Scarlet and Violet. So enjoy these fan made games. You really aren't gonna, you're not gonna regret it. All five of these are amazing. Start at number one and work your way back or vice versa, whatever you wanna do, but this will keep you busy for the summer. And again, you can check out all my series and play along in the description below. I'll have the playlist for all five of these series. I had a blast playing them. I'm still playing Unbound now. And like I said, I'm definitely going back to Insurgents in the summer. I really want to play that game again. I've been I've been itching to play it again. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Like the video if you did. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We are closing in on a million subscribers. You can help me get there by subscribing today. Let me know what your favorite fan-made Pokemon game is in the comments section below. And that's going to be that for me, guys. My name is Dan. I also go by A-Drive. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.